Um, about four or five years ago we talked. At that time uh, we were in California and Proposition 37 was um, almost up for a vote. That went down. Uh, obviously that would have uh, required GMO labeling I think on products. So bring us up to date on some of the things that have happened since then. Uh, the strides that, that have been made since that defeat. Okay, well, we don't have labeling right now. Um, the, the Congress passed what we call the DARK Act, D-A-R-K, denying Americans the right to know, meaning that they don't allow states to require labeling, <coughs> but they do require the USDA to come up with some version of labeling, but the, the wording gives them such latitude that it's probably a fake labeling bill. We'll know later this year whether anything comes out of it, but it's not expected to carry much weight. It might even require just a bar, a, um, not a barcode, one of those uh, QR codes, mm -hmm. which a lot of people are going and, and using the mm -hmm. QR codes these days. Um, since then we have more evidence that uh, GMOs are quite dangerous. Um, at that time in, in uh, 2012, um, I started asking audiences to let us all know what changes happen to their health when they switch to a non-GMO or organic diet. And at over 150 lectures, the results were consistent, huge and dramatic improvements when people made the switch. Uh, the number one improvement was always digestive disorders, the number two was always improved energy and reduced brain fog, and then there was weight problems and skin problems and joint problems and depression and anxiety and all sorts of things. So. We s surveyed our list at responsibletechnology.org and asked people what they got better from when they switched to an on diet, and 3,256 people reported improvements in 28 conditions, the same relative frequency as the experience I had in 150 lectures. Digestive was the number one, then, then energy was number two, weight gain was number three, or weight loss actually, um, and then reduced brain fog and anxiety and depression and pain, etc. So that information has also been replicated in pets, because some of the pet owners talked about their pets, as well as livestock, because veterinarians and farmers talk about livestock when they switch them to non-GMO and in some cases organic food. When you look at the animal feeding studies, you see these type of conditions or their precursors uh, afflicting the lab animals that are exposed to GMOs or to Roundup herbicide, which is sprayed on most GMOs. And you also see a rise in the U.S. population of these type of problems in parallel with the increase of GMOs or the Roundup sprayed on them. So we have uh, repeating patterns where we have individual, lab animal, uh, pet, livestock, and epidemiological data, all showing that GMOs and Roundup are probably contributing to the ill health of, of tens of millions, if not hundreds of millions of people around the world. Mm -hmm.